The journey of a woman who ruled with fire, iron, and the blood of scholars. Finally, Sheikh Hasina Wazid, age 76, abandoned her position and fled from the angry crowds after two decades of ruling with an iron fist, according to her opponents. In the final hours of Hasina's rule, student and youth protests reached a critical point. Protesters faced her security forces and aggression with bare chests, driven by intense anger and a determination to overthrow the 76-year-old leader, whose five terms began in 1996. Hasina's rule ended less than seven months after she celebrated her fourth consecutive term and fifth overall, following her victory in the January elections, where she faced no effective opposition. The last month of her rule was markedly different. Public anger, led by students, drove the final nail into the coffin of her authority, which was faltering under the pressure of the protesters. The month and five days of demonstrations led the Bangladeshi army to announce that Sheikh Hasina had resigned, a more polite way of describing a military coup. Hasina had previously experienced a coup when her father, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the first president after the country's separation from Pakistan, was assassinated a few months after the civil war. Rahman had led a campaign that prosecuted 300,000 people for collaborating with Pakistan and committing war crimes. Young Hasina survived the death of her family, as she and her sister Rahana were visiting a European country. She later pursued a robust political career, eventually leading the Awami League party founded by her father. Over time, she became the second woman to rule Bangladesh after Sheikh Khaled Azia. Both women face widespread allegations of corruption and violence and come from political dynasties, Hasina following in her father's footsteps and Khaleda following her husband, General Ziaur Rahman, who was assassinated in a military coup in 1981. Khaled Azia took over the presidency of the Bangladesh Nationalist Party and began a political career marked by trials and house arrests. She became Prime Minister in 1991 and resigned in 1996, ultimately ending her career imprisoned on corruption charges and suffering from complex illnesses. Despite this, her successor and rival, Sheikh Hasina, did not allow her to leave the country for a liver transplant, a situation that has persisted since 2023. India ensured Sheikh Hasina's safety as she boarded a military plane to Ahmedabad International Airport in India. This move was anticipated due to the historical and personal ties between the Hasina family and India. These ties date back to the support India provided during the separation of Bengal from Pakistan, which enabled Sheikh Mujibur Rahman to establish the first secular pro-India regime. In her new refuge in India, Hasina left behind a country inflamed by the policies she implemented during her tumultuous years in power, marked by a history of bloodshed and authoritarian rule. Her opponents, who celebrated the fall of the dictator, noted that this outcome followed the deaths of over 300 protesters and several police officers. The protests that began on July the 1st reached a new phase on August 3rd, with students escalating their civil disobedience into a massive popular uprising. They demanded the resignation of the 70-year-old sheikh, whose Indian features and greying hair symbolized the nation's ongoing crises and worsening economic and political conditions. Unemployment had reached over 18 million young people contributing to a severe decline in her popularity. Her earlier economic policies had initially boosted the country's resources and GDP growth to 7% in a nation of 170 million people with diverse ethnicities. The quota system established over 50 years ago by Sheikh Mujibur Rahman aimed to honor the descendants of freedom fighters by allocating a significant portion of public jobs to them. 
Angry protesters claim that 56% of government jobs are allocated through this system, with 30% reserved for families of freedom fighters from the 1971 independence war, 10% for women, 10% for people from underdeveloped regions, 5% for indigenous populations, and 1% for people with disabilities. They argue that this system benefits children of government-supporting groups that back Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. In the last years of Sheikh Hasina Wazid's rule, the military and police were given free reign to suppress opponents, and the judiciary was empowered to issue death sentences, life imprisonment, and long-term sentences, with many prisoners spending their lives in dark cells. The number of those detained due to the recent protests reached around 10,000. The killing of protesters escalated, including approximately 36 children, according to UNICEF, who were shot during demonstrations or in their homes. According to Amnesty International, Bangladesh executed over 1,000 people in 2013. By 2023, the number of people sentenced to death had exceeded 2,400, awaiting execution by hanging or firing squad. Journalists and bloggers also faced severe sentences for expressing opinions or posting content critical of the government. Leaders of the Jamaati Islami Party in Bangladesh faced significant executions under Sheikh Hasina in recent years. Notable figures include Abdul Quatamola, a prominent Bengali leader and politician, was the first Jamaat e Islami leader to be executed for involvement in killings during the 1971 separation war from Pakistan. He was executed on December 12, 2013, in Dhaka Central Jail after being convicted in February 2013. Ali Hassan Mohammad Mujahid, a former minister and general secretary of Jamaat e Islami, was executed on November 21, 2015 for the torture and murder of Hindu intellectuals. He was executed on the same day as Salauddin Quadra Chowdhury, a parliamentarian from the Bangladesh Nationalist Party led by former Prime Minister Khaleda Zia. Muhammad Kamaru Zaman, another Jamaati Islami leader, was executed on April 11, 2015 in Dhaka Central Jail for his involvement in the 1971 separation war and causing numerous deaths. Motur Rahman Nizami, an elderly cleric, was executed on May 10, 2016, for charges of genocide and collaborating with the Pakistani army during the 1971 separation war. Appeals from local and international bodies did not prevent the execution. Mir Qasim Ali was also convicted of war crimes during the 1971 separation war, including the killing and torture of freedom fighters. He was executed by hanging on September 3, 2016, in a high-security prison on the outskirts of Dhaka. Golam Azam, the Emir of Jamaat e Islami in Bangladesh, was also convicted of war crimes during the Bangladesh Liberation War from Pakistan. He died in his prison cell on October 23, 2014, at the age of 89, after being sentenced to 90 years in prison serving only two years before his death. Abu al-Kalam Muhammad Yusuf, a leading scholar in Bangladesh and holder of the title Distinguished Hadith Scholar, a top honor among Hadith scholars, was a former General Secretary of Jamaati Islami and a companion of the renowned Pakistani scholar Abu Allah Maududi. He died in prison on February 9, 2014, due to worsening multiple illnesses. In addition to these prominent figures, Hasina's regime executed many intellectuals, youth, and activists, and controversially confiscated the homes of those executed. As Sheikh Hasina became a part of Bangladesh's past, the announcement of her resignation by Army Chief Wakari Zaman marked the beginning of a new chapter in the country's history, characterized by ongoing conflicts, bloodshed, and the rule of strong women.